I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. Have you ever lost a quad? Like, you crashed somewhere, and you couldn't quite see where you crashed. So you looked, and you looked, and you looked, and you looked, and the sun got lower in the sky. And your friends are over there flying. They're going to help it. What? Come help look, you bastards. And everybody looked. And nobody could find it. And finally, the sun went down. And everybody packed up and went home, and you just accepted that your $300 quad was never going to be seen again. If that has ever happened to you, then today's video, you got to watch it because we're looking at an accessory you can put on your quad that can help save you from that situation. Stay tuned. I start all of my videos by saying, you're going to learn something today. And that's always my goal. Even in a video that's kind of a product reviewer comparison, I still want you to learn something, even if you're maybe not into the product that I'm talking about. So I'm going to start this video with a little bit of an overview of things you can do to help make sure you find your quad. And then we're going to take a look at these little buzzers, which are self-powered buzzers that can help you find your quad even when all of the things that I'm going to show you fail as kind of a last ditch effort. And the first thing you can do to help make sure you find your quad is to have your DVR running in your goggles. So these are Fat Shark goggles that we're looking at here and this button controls the DVR. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold that button down until this red light turns on. If this red light's already on, then you don't need to do this step. I'm going to hold this down until the red light turns on. Now the red light is on. The other thing I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to turn off my receiver module, which you can do with this switch on the underside of the goggles. So the DVR is on and the receiver module is off and you should just see a blank screen if you look in the, in the goggles. Then I'm going to hold this button down for two-ish seconds and that will bring up the DVR menu uh, in the Fat Shark goggles. I'm going to go down to where it says record and I'm going to press to the right and that will bring up this menu and I'm going to go down to where it says auto start continuous and press to the right to accept that and then I'll press to the left to get out of that menu. And what that will do is as soon as your Fat Shark goggles power up, they will start recording DVR to the SD card that you will keep in your goggles all the time. And what that means is that when you crash your quad, you can always go back to your DVR video and look and see where you crashed it. Another way of finding a lost quad is to use the quad finder function in your FPV receiver module. And if I just go to the quad finder mode, there we go. What that's going to do is you can take your goggles and you can kind of move them around this way and that way and watch the signal strength go up and down as you play sort of hotter, colder, where's Waldo with your quad. And this is actually it's pretty useful for getting you close to your quad. Um, it's not great for fine tuning because the closer you get, it, as you get closer, it kind of doesn't matter which way you're facing. The signal is kind of strong everywhere, but it definitely helps you dial in on the quad. And if you also have Lua scripts, or if you can get enough of a video transmission to change your video transmitter power using the OSD, what you can do is when you're far away from the quad, you turn the quad up to max power and then you use the quad finder to kind of home in on where it is. And as you get closer, you turn the video transmitter power down to like 25 milliwatts, which gives you more granularity as you get closer of saying, okay, where is it? And then that this will get you within about a 15, 20, 30 foot radius of the quad, at which point you kind of like, okay, now I just got to find it. And you're going to have to use one of the other methods like a beeper or a buzzer or spinning the props because at that point you just you can't get precise enough because the power is so high. All the methods we've discussed so far for finding a lost quad have one problem in common. They require that the quad be powered up. So if your battery strap broke, if your battery ejected and came unplugged, or if you chopped the main discharge lead, the quad's powered down and you're out of luck. And that's where these little devices come in. Each of these devices contains a buzzer, and it is a way louder buzzer than the buzzer that you typically find on a quad. That's like these little guys. We'll see just how much louder in a second. They have a built-in buzzer, and they have a built-in little one-cell lithium battery. And that battery charges up while you're flying. It's got a charging circuit for the battery. It charges up while you're flying. And then when you crash and your battery ejects, it detects that the quad has lost power, and it starts to beep really freaking loudly. 
The other thing is that these buzzers, they act like your regular buzzer on your quad. So if you've got one of these little guys, replace it with one of these little guys and you'll have a much louder buzzer when you're just normally just using your buzzer mode. Now this is the Hellgate buzzer. Uh, this is the quad box edition of the Hellgate buzzer. There's a quad box edition. There's a, you buy from the quad box store. There's a Rotoriot edition. You buy from the Rotoriot store and then there's the generic Hellgate edition. They're all identical. And Hellgate deserves credit for being the first to well, this is a little tricky because Hellgate is not the first self-powered quad finder buzzer. There's, there have been others, but Hellgate really just look how small this is. These guys got this down to a really small size. And, and then we have this from Full Speed, which is a very similar product. Although the Full Speed one has a button and we'll see what a difference that makes when we talk about using these. And then here we've got, this one is from V-Fly, the V-Fly Finder, it doesn't have a logo on it, but it's similar, it's a little bit bigger, has a little bit bigger battery and a little bit bigger buzzer. Wiring these guys up is really simple. They're all wired up the same way. There is a ground pad, a five volt pad, and a buzz minus pad. The ground pad is connected to ground, the five volt pad is connected to five volts and is used to power the, uh, power the buzzer and charge the battery and the buzz minus pad is used to trigger the buzzer mode when you're using it just like a regular buzzer. So here I've got the wires soldered to the Hellgate buzzer and I'm gonna show you where I connect them to the flight controller. In this case, I'm using the JBF4 flight controller. Uh, you can use anything you like though. Um, for the positive five volt pad, you can actually use buzz plus. Buzz plus, buzzer plus on any flight controller is just a five volt pad, it's nothing special. Uh, buzz minus is actually the one that is switched and is used to switch the buzzer on and off. And then for ground, well, let's we could use any ground pad. So here's a ground pad for the LED. We could certainly use that if I'm not using, or if, even if you are using LEDs, just double up on the pad. Or you can use any ESC minus, ESC minus pad, whatever you want, they're all, they're all ground. Now at this point, the buzzer should work normally uh, if you've got a buzzer mode set up in your modes tab, when you flip the switch to activate that mode, this buzzer should start going off. And if you don't know how to set that up, I've got a video on setting up Betaflight flight modes. I'll link it down in the video description and it, it's, you can go set that up. But what's really interesting is how it behaves when it loses power. Let's take a look at that. Now at this point, the buzzer is armed and if we lose power, watch what happens. That clicking indicates that the buzzer has detected a loss of power and in 60 seconds, 60 seconds takes longer than you think. There it goes. And it's just gonna keep doing this until the battery dies. So how do we disable it? When we find the quad, how do we shut it the heck up? We do that by reconnecting power And if you reconnect power for between one and four seconds, that disarms the quad. That way it's not yelling at you while you're going home. The whole time you're going home, you know, hey, I've lost power. Hey, I'm in your trunk, I lost power. So this is the full speed buzzer and you can see it wires up the exact same as the Hellgate. Um, it has an LED on it, so it blinks and it's got this button. And the button is used for two things. Number one, the button is used to enable and disable the buzzer. So whereas with the Heli 8, if you wanna disarm it when you're done flying, you plug a battery and you unplug the battery after you know, three seconds. Uh, with this one, you can do that, but you also have the option to just push this battery one, two, three times to disarm it. So here, what we'll just demonstrate here, if I unplug power, really? Are you disarmed? How about if I plug power in? Does anything happen? Okay. Oh, oh, now you're happy. What are we doing? I'm not really sure what we're doing. If we unplug power, let's see what happens. Nothing, no warning. Do we have an, any indication at all that shit's about to happen? There it is. I knew it would happen eventually. <laughs> And there we go. Now it's going off. So just this waiting. Um, here, let's turn it off with the three pre and presses. One, two, three. Can that do it? One, two, 
three. There we go. Perfect. So certainly one thing about the full speed Lucky Box buzzer is that it doesn't have that click function that the Hellgate has where it warns you that it's lost power and it's about to start beeping. Now this is the V-Fly Finder and it's similar in function to the others. Like the Lucky Box from full speed, it has a button to help you disarm it. Uh, it is nice that it has a plug instead of solder connectors. One thing that that does mean is that if you wanted to just buy one of these and move it between your quads, it would be easier to do with the V-Fly than with the other two because the other two are made for direct soldering. The other thing that we got to note about the V-Fly is that it's significantly bigger than the other two. Uh, the Hellgate advertised, get over here, advertises up to like two days of buzzing off the battery. That really depends on how often it goes off, I guess. Um, but the, the full speed with a similar size battery uh, with one beep every three seconds advertises only a few hours of beeping. S suffice it to say that this guy should beep a lot longer, although we have to note that it also has a much bigger buzzer. All right, so this guy's powered up and you can see it does have an LED indicator there. Not so bright as it would help you find your quad in the darkness, but it does indicate that it's got power and it's working. Always a good thing to have to make sure that everything's working right. It did not give us any beep or any indication when we first powered up. Although if you have it wired up as your quad's buzzer, it will of course beep when the flight controller makes it beep when you power up. You can verify that it's working. There we go. Power has been disconnected. And it's going to beep quietly for 30 seconds and then it's going to start beeping at full volume. Whoa, yes, that's really loud. Okay, I'm gonna just push this button one, two, three times. Jesus, one, two, please disarm, disarm. There we go, hold the button down to disarm. Yeesh, okay, that one's much louder. Wow, that's disgustingly loud. Okay, I wonder if it beeps at full volume when used as a regular buzzer. What I'm going to do is I'm going to touch the buzz minus wire to the ground and that should make it beep as a regular buzzer. No, it beeps at full volume. Okay. Oh God, it's going to do it. It's going to do it. Hang on. No, don't do it. Don't do it. Stop. <laughs> no, power, disarm. Did you disarm? No, it's, oh, it's going to go. It's going to go. Hang on. One, Mississippi. Two, Mississippi. Okay, there we go, it's disarmed. Okay, so the V-Fly buzzer is a great lost drone buzzer. It's loud as crap, but I would not want to use it as my day-to-day -day buzzer because it's loud as crap. It's too much. V-Fly, listen, V-Fly, you gotta make this change and they're gonna do it because this is such a good idea, why wouldn't you? You got to give me the option or maybe just make it be this way that when I use the buzzer mode, it doesn't beep at full volume. It only beeps at full volume when it's lost, when you get the lost buzzer. I mean, I guess I see your point because sometimes you lose the quad and the battery is still attached and you want to be able to trigger the buzzer mode and then you would want it full volume. Okay. Okay. V-Fly, here's how you got to do it. When I trigger the buzzer mode for the first 30 seconds, the buzzer is is low volume. That way, you know, anytime like the flight controller beeps normally, then it it's low volume. But if it is triggered for more than 30 seconds, then it goes to full volume. Yeah, maybe something like that. I don't know. Get on it, V-Fly. I would not use this right now as my regular buzzer. I would not hook up the yellow wire because it's too freaking loud. And every time I plug in my battery, bleh, it would blow my ears off. So that brings us to the end of the video and the question which of these should you buy? And I have to acknowledge that for some people, the answer is none of them. If you, if you don't eject your battery very often, or if you usually fly in places where you can easily recover your quad, you don't really need this. Racers, when you're not gonna lose your quad. You're gonna go down and then when the heat ends, you're gonna walk out and pick it up. This is more for freestyle pilots and especially beginners who are likely to crash in areas where recovery is difficult. It's also more for people who, Maybe your battery game isn't quite on point yet. You know, I fly, I always use two battery straps if at all possible. I use really good thick rubberized newbie drone battery straps. I have gel like Umagrip or some other sticky gel pad on all my quads and I almost never eject a battery. 
So for me, I mean, the extra loud buzzer could still be useful for finding a quad, but I just usually can find my quad after I crash and that's just my, me. But if you've ever lost a quad in a scenario where this buzzer would have saved you, this, this probably seems like a great idea for you. So the V-Fly is 15 bucks. The full speed is 11 bucks. And the Hellgate is 30 bucks. The Hellgate is a lot more than the others. It has to be acknowledged that the Hellgate is, if you care about cloning and originality, then the Hellgate's the one you want to buy. They were the first, they worked with Armitan, they all first party, yada, yada, yada. And there are people out there who are going to see the V-Fly and the full speed as clones or whatever you guys and so you won't buy them you'll spend more on this one because it's the first party one i'm not going to weigh in on that i just i'm going to acknowledge that's a fact the uh, hellgate is the smallest not quite not by much the full speed is pretty close and it's almost a third of the price the full speed has some configurability that the others don't. You can actually hold down the button and go into a little beepy menu that configures how long it takes to start beeping and how often it'll beep once it starts going. The V-Fly is by far the loudest. Holy crap. So if you want the absolute loudest, the V-Fly is going to be the one for you. It's also a little bit bigger than the others. Um, if you've got a really tight quad, you might have trouble fitting it in. But for a typical freestyle quad, it's not going to be too much of an issue. So there you go. Those are three lost model beepers, self-powered beepers. And now you know about them and a whole lot of other ways to find your quad if you lose it. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Is there another way of finding your quad that I've overlooked? Hmm? Let me know. Happy flying.